evening, Mr. Agung and my friends. We hope you guys have a good day. Uh, now, we want to explain our our discussion of of the case titled Mark Inventing for Life. Uh, brief brief explanation. Uh, Mark Inventing for Life is the pioneer of developing major new antibiotic compounds, especially to the especially to the drugs for river blindness, which is world rare disease. So let's start with the company profile. Merck Company is one of the largest pharmacy company who produce prescription drugs in the world. In the late 1970, Merck's almost 10 years not released a new product. Merck only have two big many makers, which is Indosin and all the med drugs that will expire. So they have to begin to invest on research for develop a new product. Merck's company have a goal to work as a quiz to alleviate human disease and suffering worldwide. As the Merck's former said, we try never to forget that medicine is for the people. It's not for the profit. The profit follow and if we have remembered it, they have never failed to appear. The better we have remembered it, the larger they have been. This word become to the basis of Merck's corporate philosophy. As the pioneer of developing major new antibiotic compounds, Merck starts to do research drugs for river blindness, which is a rare disease in the third world. River blindness or onchocerciasis is a parasitic disease caused by the filaria worms on Corsair fufus trans transmitted by repeated bites of infect black flies or simulum sp. These black flies spread along fast flowing rivers and streams close to remote villages located near fertile land where people rely on agriculture and more 99% of infected people live in 31 African countries. And the disease also exists in some Latin America. In 1980, Infermectin had transversed quite a distance on its journey to becoming a river blindness therapy from the original parasitological research led by Dr. Campbell and Dr. Pierre Fagalas as a head of Merck Research Lab approved initiated funding for research into a potential treatment for river blindness on oncocerciasis drugs. Okay, first question is about what it could be at risk for Fagulas as CEO of Merck to decide to invest for Dr. Campbell ideas. Okay, next. We divide the views into the pros and cons of Fagulas should or should not invest in the Dr. Campbell ideas. From the pro side, first is saving human's life from sickness. Because if there is no cure for the disease, the disease will spread and will cause um, other harm. Second, good reputation. If Mark success develop the cure, it will be good um, for their company reputation. They will receive more trust to develop other drugs. Third point is staying true to the corporate philosophy put in place by Merck, which is their value is our business is preserving and improve and improving human life. So we think Vagelos can decide um, to invest. For even if the research failed to produce a treatment for river blindness, it might produce findings of future use to the company. And the last reason, if there is already a research research foundation for the for other disease there is no need to start research for beginning besides this the some part of people that pro to the investment there are also some part uh, that cons to the investment the, the reason uh, usually the reason is first is extra extra cost as we know uh, it, this is the big. This is, this is not a small investment, so there will be a lot of opportunity costs 
field trials and labor costs also. And the second is uh, that will cause negative effect on human. Uh, as we know that this is the investment of pharmaceutical pharmaceutical thing, so there will be any effect uh, beside baik buruk maupun baik. Nah, and then the third is the little to zero profit. And and the last the last reason is putting the company's reputation at risk. Uh, the last thing will be will be done if the investment or the the cure is have a bad impact and cause the cause the condition become worse. So the conclusion from the risk of pros and cons for Vegulus as CEO described earlier is uh, the stakes for Roy Vegulus as CEO would include a high degree of risk to succeed, a high chance of low revenue even after success or maybe no return at all. And Merck will have a negative reputation if the medicine cause negative effects in people. The stakes for Merck as a firm would include the business ethic it has followed as well as Merck's desire to generate another successful perception because uh, Merck is successful Merck is already successful in achieving the company's objective and for the next question will be explained by my other friends the second question regarding the Merck and co case study is how to define research budget that should be invested in a project which will yield substandard or perhaps zero return for the company. First of all, we break down uh, the resource of funding into two main source of funds, uh, which is the first uh, is self-funding by the Merck and Co. We can see here from 1970 to 1978, Merck and Co net income each year. Uh, the second is the investment from WHO. WHO invested $26 million along with scientists and research facilities. There is some reason why the drug like Ivermectin and Mectizen is hard to generate profit. In this case study, we found five reasons. First, World Heart Organization collaborated with private drug companies to develop drug for third world nation, which the third world nation did not have the marketplace and have large population. Second is the victim were too poor. They live in utterly isolated location and they had no access to ph pharmacy or routine medical care. Third, drug company do not think an unlimited supply of a breakthrough drug to millions of people. Next is the Anticipated Funder Included Foundation, International Health of Development Organization, Third World Government, and the U.S. Government. But the U.S. Government failed to come up with funding. The last is many potential drugs offered little chance of financial return. Some diseases were so rare that treatment development could never be priced high enough to recoup the investment research. The next is ethic value that are held. According to George Weimer, son of the company's founder and ex chairman have stated a statement that uh, the people make said it is not for the profit. The profits follow and if we have remembered that, they have never failed to appeal. Uh, the better we have remembered it, the larger they have been. This word form, of, form the basis of Merck overall corporate philosophy. And the second is medical's main purpose ethically is for the good of people. So summarizing the answer for question number two about how to make the project would yield zero return to the company is to make the, the project valued in other way instead of profit, which this mean to be humanity purposes. And also referring to the company's top management philosophy that medicine is supposedly for the people, to the people and to the victims who are afflicted by the disease that cannot afford the price. 
So these are factors that be the kinds of considerations to follow in how to value project to be humanity process. What will you as Vegelos uh, tell shareholders who might complain about the investment on research on river blindness? As Dr. Vegelos, uh, we, went, we would have to explain first how medical companies ethically work. The shareholders must have an image that most medical companies would not make profit off of their newly developed or existing drugs. Therefore, we should focus more on how these drugs can help third world nations with populations that have low income to survive these types of diseases. This will affect the image of the company as a whole, both ethically and socially. Simply put, uh, the impact of these drugs will boost Merck's image in the general public in the long run, and it will help Merck's sustainability as a company to research new drugs in the future. Furthermore, uh, the shareholders must be told how these new, newly developed drugs won't profit the companies in a short amount of time. The reason is research and development, where these drugs have to be clinically tested thoroughly before being distributed to people that needed them. It also have to pass certain policies in certain countries or WHO, World Health Organization's backed standards. So the conclusion for this Merck's case, Merck's first, I think first that we should know that Merck's is uh, running for medicinal companies that didn't make large profit of, of newly developed and very specific drugs for a very specific disease. Typically, however, it's very fitting for a medicinal company to be socially responsible and help developing countries quite sustain disease. Doing this research is actually benefiting works in maintaining the social trust and work later give future opportunities to take part in developing medicine. We mean that in this case, we know that uh, Marx is a pioneer in medicinal companies, so it holds a big responsibility to start and to uh, give help to fight third world disease that we know that third world disease uh, we mean that the countries didn't they didn't have enough money to buy drugs for its um residents for its um uh, countries so uh, it's obviously we need to give them help uh, as as much as we can uh, as uh, Marx the a big company in this section but it doesn't mean a company should give up their revenue but in the medical area we shall put human purpose in consideration whereas revenue will fall through many other se sectors considerably in the long term of companies so this is uh, the end of our geo presentation uh, thank you for your attention.